Welcome back to Open Line, talking about presidential politics, the New Hampshire primary tonight. Early results already coming in, 12 to 16 percent of the vote in on both sides, 34 percent for Trump, 58 percent for Sanders. So about how they were polling, still very early though. Awfully fun to talk about it. Dr. Thomas Swartz is here, and let's go to Mel. Hello, Mel. Yes, um, I'm, I'm here. We're hearing the term "silent majority" again this election cycle, and I'm just wondering if Mr. Swartz uh, has any idea what percent of voters that vote in a presidential election actually represent those that could vote, meaning those that don't bother to register, who could register. And those who are registered that don't vote, what what percent actually does vote? What percent votes in a presidential election? Yes, uh, of those that could vote, meaning those who don't right. register to vote but could, and those that are uh, registered that don't vote. Okay. I mean, yeah. Yeah. How many people participate? Well, generally? turnout turnout has been. Um, uh, trending a little higher in the 50 to 60 percent range for presidential elections and certainly in uh, 2008 in 2012, Barack Obama was able to mobilize his supporters. Uh, there is the argument that a number of conservatives didn't go out in 2012 and 2008, and that's part of the argument that Cruz is making, that there's a conservative silent majority. Uh, but the, the numbers don't really tend to show that. Uh, that it's, it would still be possible to get more people out to vote, but what we seem to see in most of the numbers is that they would largely break down along the way uh, other voters do, that there's not a, a, a a silent majority out there waiting to be tapped. And that, that, that's one of those um, uh, uh, propositions that hasn't been tested yet uh, um, and uh, may be tested this fall. And let's go to Faye. Hello, Faye. Yes. Go right ahead. Okay. Uh, I think the young people need to realize that these old people, Trump is old, Sanders is old, and Hillary is old, and with the new technology, we need somebody in there young who knows what to do. In Bob Woodward's book, he said during Bill Clinton's administration, Bill just kind of played around, you know, he was a professor from Arkansas, and Hillary made most of the decisions, so she's already been president. Let's let her go. <laughs> Look at the Clintons, and we don't want Chelsea and Bill and Hillary in the White House. <laughs> okay. Make it any clearer. <laughs> All right. They want somebody yeah, new, young. You know, I'm 87, so let's get somebody that knows on a computer like I do. <laughs> okay. All right, Faye. Thank you very much. We'll just keep going down the line here. Let's go to Greg. Hello, Greg. Yes. Go right ahead. What I'd like to know is, how does these politicians, being most of them's lawyers and all, get to uh, slander people? They, they they slander people and never never get anything. A common person that they even make fun of our president. How how disrespectful is that to the American people? All right, I think I know the answer. They're public figures, so they have uh, wide. Um, they're they're able to do that. They're able to do wide it. latitude yeah, no. to do that. Yeah. Um, you can say well, almost you can say a lot of stuff about a public figure, especially in a debate. Yes. Yep. And so, um, but Greg, uh, thank you. You're, I think he's 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 liking he he would like a more positive sort of discussion, perhaps. Let's go to David. Hello, David. Hey, how you doing? Great. What's on your mind? Uh, I just want to say, like Donald Trump is uh, he's like scaring white people into voting for him because it happens with these Republicans. I kind of like remember with George Bush is their tactics and. And scares white folks into voting for him. So that's what I, I, I just don't know why they would go along with him on his views when he so out of bounds with everything. That's all I have to say. All right, David. Thank you. And so lots of interesting views. And and so we've talked about anger. Um, part of the discussion does evolve around fear. Yes. Yeah. And how unusual is that? Looking back through history. 
it certainly is a motivator when it comes to voting. Oh, it, it was very strong. You could make the case that the 2004 election between Bush and Kerry in the wake of 9-11 was a fear election and a great deal of fear about terrorism. We've had elections on fear. Um, we've had them on, um, we've had elections that were, were geared more toward uh, um, uh, fears of the economy. Uh, particularly economic uncertainty in that. So it, it doesn't surprise me. And in, in some ways, the the emphasis in this election could shift if there were another terrorist attack or something like that. You could get even more along that line. So I think I think fear will certainly be one of the emotions and one of the, the key uh, motivators for um, uh, uh, getting people to the polls. And this may be too simplistic, but it seems like this election is kind of focused on the establishment versus kind of the outsider. On the Democratic side, you have Bernie Sanders, who, who kind of came out of nowhere. Everyone thought it would, it would be Hillary for right. sure. Yeah. On the Republican side, Donald Trump, I think people are surprised, yeah. and there were several establishment candidates. What do you think? Will things, will the establishment win out in both cases, or will, will it not? If you had to, to guess here. I had to guess now, I'd still think the establishment in some way will win. Maybe not in both parties. But that ultimately, you know, my, my, if I was a betting man now, I'd sort of bet that uh, essentially you might get more of an anti-establishment tone in the Republican side, but that the Democrats will eventually come back to Hillary, uh, partly because I think the Democrats, uh, it seems as a party, ultimately are more organized and want to win. In many respects, it seems to me the Republicans are a circular firing squad. Um, they basically have been uh, undermining each other so much so that I wonder whether um, any candidate can emerge who can be viable and win the election. What you have in the Republican Party now is there are so many different factions. The Tea Party is a big part of that. Right. And it's part of the circular firing squad in Congress where they can't get anything done and they fight amongst each other. And and that is, that's an interesting thought there. And, and so you think that may cause big problems? I think that may cause big problems. I mean, it, it, in some ways it indicates the health of the party and that the party is larger than it was. And some of the statistics we have now show that registration of the Republicans has actually gone up. There are more Republicans than there have been. The problem is that this, the viciousness of the disagreements may mean that they might be unable to harness that toward victory. It might be one of these cases of which they might want to move in the direction of purity and then end up losing. And so as we kind of watch these results come in tonight and, and examine them tomorrow, what, what do you think some of the takeaways will be? What should everyone be looking for as, as they see these results come in? Well, I have a feeling there'll be an awful lot on the sort of establishment, anti-establishment, the idea of Trump and Sanders as representing these two, two different visions. Um, a lot of media play to that. Um, Trump will probably come out with a momentum to go to South Carolina, but there will be there will be some winnowing, and so the establishment will regroup, and it will be interesting to see if they can make a stand in in some of the southern states against these uh, insurgents, so to speak. So, in, in our final two minutes, if you had you, you kind of talked about this at the top of the show, but I think it's the most interesting thing to come out of New Hampshire the number of people who will get a ticket to go down to South Carolina. So right now we have this large field. We've had Iowa, we've had New Hampshire. Some people dropped out after Iowa. Right. How many do you think really go down to South Carolina? How many, how many get out of New Hampshire alive? Okay, well, on the Republican side, obviously Bernie and Hillary are going to be in this for the long haul. On the Republican side, I would predict between four to six will go down to South Carolina. Uh, possibly a seventh, but not being viable. I mean, Jim Gilmore is still running for president, and no one's heard of him, but he's still running. Um, so <laughs> the, there are candidates who have no backing who are continuing the case, but I have a feeling that at least one of the governors will drop out after New Hampshire, and then um, uh, Ben Carson's campaign is on, on its last legs. Uh, Carly Fiorina's on its last legs. So, I, But I do think, I, I do think it'll be still a, a pretty sizable number in that, in that South Carolina debate. It, it won't go down to three. And how, how unusual would it be for someone to lose Iowa and New Hampshire and then get the nomination? Not, not totally unusual. So that I happens. think it can happen. It's not, in recent, the recent past, uh, it's not happened 
in uh, uh, quite a while, let's put it that way. It's, it, it's been quite a while since that happened. On the other hand, um, it could, this year could be, this year has broken a lot of rules, and so it would not be out of the question. Um, even if Trump wins in New Hampshire, he's only going to win with about a third of the vote. That means that there's still a lot of uh, uncertainty if the rest of the candidates come uh, unite behind someone else. So it's, it's uh, possible. So I think we can close out here by saying uh, CNN has called it, right, that Trump and Sanders have won. So the numbers are still coming in. Of course, the margin of victory is very important. Right. Um, it's not a surprise on the Democratic side that Sanders won. How much he won by is very important. That's the key, yes. And Trump was leading right. in the polls. You wonder if somebody would overtake him, but how much he wins by. That's right. very interesting. Okay, so it's been called. Um, we'll take a break. Come back right after this.